In this video, we'll discuss what regularization is and when and why it may be helpful to add it to our model. In our previous video on overfitting, we briefly introduced the concept of dropout and stated that it was a regularization technique. We hadn't yet discussed what regularization is, so let's do that now. In general, regularization is a technique that helps reduce overfitting or reduce variance in our network by penalizing for complexity. The idea is that certain complexities in our model may make our model unlikely to generalize well, even though it fits the training data. So given this, if we add regularization to our model, we're essentially trading in some of the ability of our model to fit the training data well for the ability to have the model generalize better to data it hasn't seen before. To implement regularization is to simply add a term to our loss function that penalizes for large weights. We'll expand on this idea in just a moment. The most common regularization technique is called L2 regularization. Now we just said that regularization basically involves adding a term to our loss function that penalizes for large weights. With L2 regularization, the term that we're adding to the loss is the sum of the squared norms of the weight matrices multiplied by a small constant. Now, if you're not familiar with norms in general, understand that a norm is just a function that assigns a strictly positive length or size to each vector in a vector space. The vector space we're working with here would just depend on the size of our weight matrices. Rather than going on a linear algebra tangent about norms in this moment, we'll continue on with the general idea about regularization. But given that norms are a fundamental concept of linear algebra, there's a lot of information available on the web that explains norms in detail if you need to get a better grasp. But to oversimplify, know that for now, the norm of each of our weight matrices is just going to be a positive number. So let's break down L2 regularization. We have our loss function here. Now we add the sum of the squared norms from our weight matrices and multiply this by a constant. This constant here is going to be denoted by lambda divided by 2m, where m is the number of inputs. Now this lambda here is called the regularization parameter, and this is another hyperparameter that we'll have to choose and then test and tune in order to assign the correct number for our specific model. So to summarize, we know that regularization is just a technique that penalizes for relatively large weights in our model, and behind the scenes, the implementation of regularization is just the addition of a term to our existing loss function. With L2 regularization, we saw that this term is the sum of the squared norms of our weight matrices that is then added to the regularization parameter, lambda, divided by two times our input. So why does regularization help? Well, using L2 regularization as an example, if we were to set lambda to be a relatively large number, then it would incentivize the model to set the weights close to zero because the objective of SGD is to minimize the loss function. And remember, our original loss function is now being summed with the sum of the squared matrix norms, which is then being multiplied by lambda over 2m. So if lambda was large, then this term here would continue to stay relatively large. And if we're multiplying that by this sum, then that product may be relatively large depending on how large our weights are. So then our model is incentivized to make these weights small so that the value of the overall function stays relatively small in order to meet the objective of minimizing the loss. Intuitively, we could think that maybe this technique will set the weights so close to zero that it could basically zero out or reduce the impact of some of our layers. In that case, it would conceptually simplify our model, making our model less complex, which may in turn reduce variance and overfitting. So now that we have a general idea about regularization, let's see how we can add it to our model in Keras. So I'm here in my Jupyter Notebook, and in this first cell, I've just imported the libraries and classes that we'll be working with. The only one that should be new to us is this last one. Here I'm importing regularizers from Keras. Now one thing to mention here is that regularizers in Keras allow us to apply penalties on layer parameters or layer activity during optimization. So we're essentially setting regularization for specific layers rather than for the entire model. In this next cell, I have a model we've worked with in previous videos. For all intents and purposes, this model is pretty arbitrary. We've got two dense layers with 16 and 32 nodes respectively, with both using ReLU, and an output layer with two nodes for classification using the sigmoid activation function. Now there's only one difference in this model from how it was in other videos that we've seen it in. The difference here is within our second hidden layer that has 32 nodes. I've added this kernel underscore regularizer parameter. 
Here I'm specifying that I want to use L2 regularization by setting the parameter equal to regularizers.l2. I'm then specifying 0 0.01 to be the regularization parameter, which we denoted earlier as lambda. And that really is all there is to it for adding regularization to one of our layers in Keras. So hopefully now you have a general idea about what regularization is and how it can help reduce overfitting. Additionally, you should now know how to apply it in Keras as well. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. And thanks for watching.